Hello and welcome to the Grand Union Canal in West London. About 10 or 15 years ago, I distinctly remember going to the London Boat Show and back then they had a small inland waterway section which included narrowboats. The rest of the show was all giant multi-million pound motor cruisers and luxury yachts. But I had a look at the inland waterway section and I remember going on a narrowboat and I thought, you'll never get me on one of these. It's so narrow. Well, obviously how times change. I've now had my boat for, well, this is my fifth year of ownership. But what if you, like me then, just can't countenance the idea of being on something so narrow? I mean, narrowboats are six feet ten inches wide, and that's the external dimensions. Inside, it's even narrower. Well, in that case, you need a wide beam. So what's it like with a wide beam? What are the pros and cons? There's one right here. Let's find out. This is We're On The Move, an Aqualine Canterbury built in 2012. It's 11 feet wide and 65 feet long. The boat is the home of Mark and Julie Weir, who sold their house and moved aboard full-time in 2017. Now they travel the canals in the south of England with their dog Eric, who snores, as you'll hear in the interview. They document their life on their YouTube channel, also called We're On The Move. They told me what prompted them to make this life change. I've always wanted to do something a little bit different so it first started with let's get a, a field and put something in it like a bus or a, a yurt yeah. or something like that. Log cabin. Log cabin that came up mm. um, and Mark was very much against it. Yeah you? I was very much entrenched in though you have a mortgage, you have a house, you have a job you know nine to five or in my case seven till seven six days a week. And Julie was always a bit of a hippie child who thought that, you know, you could grow flowers <laughs> and your own crops and live the good life. And can make a living from yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and then we saw a programme called My Floating Home. And there was a couple on there. And it obviously turned out that they worked for the Nottingham Boat Company in retrospect. But they were having a boat built. And I looked at Julie and went, I could live on one of those. Um, and that was the start of it, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And so. I immediately went online because I thought, oh, he's agreed to something. I've got to, I've got to get this now and um, looked up and Quick Boat Show was on. Yeah, it happened to be about a month later, I think it was, yeah. So. so that's when we went down, had a look at the boats and decided what could we actually live on and work on and that was the important thing. Let's take a tour, starting from the stern where you get on. There's a large deck to sit in in the summer or be a spare room in the wet of winter. Controls for the boat are like any standard narrowboat, forwards and backwards. Like most, but not all, wide beams, this is a reverse layout, which means you start with the kitchen or living area at the back. Unlike a narrowboat, there is absolutely acres of space, of course. It's much more like a small flat than a boat. Cupboards, cupboards, cupboards. No shortage of storage whatsoever. And decent worktops, too. Look at this huge, dedicated pantry. The stuff of dreams for narrowboaters. That would practically be another cabin or shower room in a narrowboat. Here, storage for enough spice to open a curry house. Speaking of which, cooking is taken care of with an oven and grill, plus a four-burner hob above, all run on propane. There's a fridge in there. And again, a vast expanse of worktop to chop up and prep your meals on. Like all Aqualines, the electrical wiring is a thing of beauty. Arguably overdone, but nonetheless extremely tidy. That's a 3 kilowatt inverter at the bottom. The saloon is next, with that 11-foot beam lending itself to a spacious living area with a big TV and bookcase at the far wall. And there's Eric for scale. Heating comes either from water-filled radiators fired by a diesel heater or this wood-burning stove. On the far side are enough cupboards and shelves to open a library. Relaxing in the evening is taken care of by these two armchairs. It all looks amazing so far, but there is a drawback. We don't have a dinette. Yeah, that's actually I would true. love a dinette. <laughs> yeah. well, you were commenting on this the other day. You said yeah. that in a narrowboat, 
you are forced by, the, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. So because of the restricted space, narrowboat designers are far cleverer, far cleverer at producing more with less. You know, when you consider on a narrowboat, you can probably sleep six comfortably with a Pullman dinette. And on a wide beam, it's almost like they say, well, we've got all this space, let's just be a bit lazy. We can fit all these lovely things in, but we're not going to bother working out how no. to fit in. So we sit here and think, well, we've got a table, but we'd love a, a dinette. And it would have been a lot easier if somebody put a little bit more ingenuity and thought into narrowboat design into a wide beam to give you more with the space mm. that you've got, because yeah. that's the downside of a wide beam. You just think, big boat, ah, well, we'll just do, you know, modular living. They can put their own furniture in. The tour continues down the side passage, which again is less cramped than those on narrowboats. There are two bedrooms on this boat. The first and smaller one is both spare room and office for Julie's art business. That sofa bed pulls out to make up the accommodation. Even on a wide beam, a business can take up a lot of room, it seems. The bathroom is pure luxury, with enough space to hold a party. Sink in the corner, storage for loo rolls underneath. The main toilet is a pump out with a large holding tank, but the weirs also keep a portable toilet aboard for emergencies too. The shower is a great size, no need to bang your elbows on the glass. And opposite that, guess what? More storage and workspace for making yourself presentable in the morning. Finally, we have the master bedroom, Look at all that space to get around the full-size bed and make up the sheets. What joy! More cupboards. More storage. I must say, Aqualine do make a nice-looking boat. Those are the bow doors, so you can pop out in your dressing gown of a morning, frighten the neighbours and sit with a nice cup of tea and your breakfast, admiring your onboard garden. Being wide also means more roof space too, for solar panels and the paraphernalia of boating life, whether coal bags, wood or whatever. It sounds perfect and largely is, as Mark and Julie explain. Obviously the space, um, the fact that you um, can accommodate your family, that was important to us because we have family come and stay at Christmas, mm. you know, the two children come with their partners and we managed to get six of us around a table and have Christmas dinner. All of those things, you know, it's daft, you plan your entire living area for one or two days in a year when, some, when, when the entire family come and the rest of the time, you know, obviously you're kicking around in a big space. The, the pros for us were... It's manageable, it fits the canal that we're on, um, you know, it enables us to continuously cruise, it enables us to do all the things that we wanted to do, but not necessarily compromise too much on the things that we wanted to give up, if that is mm. the case. So it helps that you can we can both work on the boats. So we've got the extra space that we can store all our equipment for for working as well, which we would have struggled with a narrow boat. Yeah. Because um, we desperately wanted a narrow boat, but we just couldn't downsize to one. So this was the next best option, which you know is either be on a boat or don't be on a boat. And yeah. this was the only way we could work out that we could actually do it and accommodate the family, etc. But not everything's quite as rosy as it might seem. The key issue with wide beams is that they can't use the whole canal network, as the canals in the Midlands are narrow beam only. Not just narrower canals, but locks that only take narrow boats as well. Take those canals from the equation and you're left with a north-south divide that prevents wide beams going from top to bottom or vice versa. People say to us all the time, we get asked, the most common question we get asked is, um, you know, where can you travel? How far can you travel? And we had to compromise the fact that we couldn't travel the entire network, but we still managed to travel enough to keep us happy that we're on the water and we're moving and we're seeing different sites. And so far this year, we've seen 281 miles of canal and river and i would say that we're definitely not disappointed no and we've still got loads we've to still see got lots more to do. i think you have to make a decision of whether you want to be in the south or whether you want to be in the north yeah um because it doesn't join up there is a narrow stretch in between the south and the north that we can't travel down so we can do the south perhaps when we need black in come out of the water and then go into the north so that's an option that we you know, we could do in the future. Yeah. 
A boat that's 11 or 12 feet wide and maybe 60 feet long or more could seem like a monster. But what are they actually like to steer? I suppose we don't know any different. I don't steer the boat. I do need to do that. I do need to um, have a go at doing this. But um, you don't know any different, do you? So... No, we, we had a go on a friend's narrowboat um, when we, before we started the adventure um, a few years back. And that was quite straightforward. I think... Unless it had a steering wheel where it's completely different to a tiller, mm. a tiller's a tiller, a boat's a boat. You know, I find that I move it slightly, the boat moves. I move it slightly, the boat moves. It responds in exactly the same. The only thing I've got to remember is, is that as I come to a line of boats that are moored and there's another boat coming towards me, I find I'm the one that has to give consideration to the boat coming towards me if it's a narrow boat. I tend to find that I automatically adopt that I'm the guilty party because I've got the bigger boat. Therefore, I'll be the one that grounds or that moves <laughs> into the trees or that, you know, because, you know, I'm the one technically that's blocking the way. Mm. But handling wise, it handles like a dream. You know, as far as I'm concerned, it, it's the easiest thing in the world to steer. Since wide beam just means anything wider than a narrow boat, wide beams come in all shapes and sizes from Dutch barges which can handle the open sea if they want to, to boats that look like narrowboats but are just built wider. But even the so-called wide canals aren't always that wide in parts, and wide beams certainly do take up the room, which means some narrowboaters resent them being there at all, and canal rage is not unheard of. Had a couple, hmm. haven't we? Up the end where it's... Um... It, I mean, it's still a wide beam canal, but nearer to Braunston, we've had a few people um, commenting on the size of the boat and, and saying yeah. we should be in a marina. You do get people that are traditionalists that will, you know, say to you, you know, if you want a, a thing that big, you know, get an apartment. Um, but, you know, my argument to that is if, you, if you're on the Kennet and Avon Canal, for example, and people say it's not wide enough, well, look at the history of the Kennet and Avon Canal because the biggest boat on the Kennet and Avon Canal was a boat that was 15 foot wide and twice the length of two double-decker buses. And um, that was designed to go up and down the Kennet and Avon. So if that could fit, I'm pretty sure our boat could fit. When you look out the window and see the beautiful scenery yeah. around you, it all kind of melts away, really. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, would you rather be stressed at work doing a sort of 60 hour week, paying your bills, um, you know, covering your 18, 19,000 pounds a year just to exist, or would you rather be stressed living on a boat, looking out of a window and feeling a lot less stressed, should we say? That's it for this one. Cheerio.